Good afternoon. Welcome to Midcap Radar. I'm Sonal Bhutra. With me is Vivek Iyer. Another down day for our own markets. Uh, this is in line with what was expected, uh, what's happening with the global space as well. But yes, we started uh, with cuts which were lower. That has actually accelerated now. Uh, the mid-caps, uh, they are the ones which are down around three tenths of a percent. Bank Nifty slightly outperforming. But in the market, it's very individual in terms of stock moves today. That's right. You know, morning the gift nifty indicator a gap down. We saw a sharp recovery intraday, but you know that hasn't held on. But quite a lot lined up on the show. Let's start off with the top headlines. Markets off, opening highs. All key sectoral indices trade in red. Mid cap index down nearly 150 points. Auto and tech stocks under pressure, while financials eke out some gains. HDFC AMC shares surged to a record high as quarter two earnings come in above estimates driven by beat on AUM growth and yield expectations. Other AMC stocks like UTI and Aditya Birla Sun Life also gain in trade. KEI Industries slumps in trade on the back of a muted show in Q2 FY25. Profit and margins mistreat estimates. Management sticks to revenue guidance of 15 to 17 percent and EBITDA margin guidance of 10 and a half to 11 percent for FY25. Rallis India sees a stellar 15% gain in trade today on the back of good quarter two performance. Companies EBITDA and profit see healthy double-digit growth. Management says EBITDA aided by volume growth and better cost management. Zydus life under pressure as company receives a setback from the U.S. court over a generic drug used to treat cancer. U.S. court rules against generic defendant pharma company MSN's claim with whom Zydus had exclusively partnered for the drug. Okay, all right, those are the top headlines. We'll discuss them in greater detail, but uh, the market today is very stock-specific. The advanced decline ratio is largely in favor of the declines right now. There's a wee bit of recovery that we're seeing on the Nifty from the lows, but it's still a cut of around 86-odd points. We have most of the sectoral indices which are in the um, red today, barring Nifty financials. Most of them in the red, we have uh, the Nifty auto space, which continues to be sluggish. 1.5% lower there, that's second day running that we are seeing that weakness in the auto space. IT2 is contributing to the losses that we are seeing today. Uh, but do, we do have some earnings expected uh, and a lot of earnings reactions which have come by as well. But yes, Nifty IT has recovered from the lows. Nifty IT has recovered quite sharply from the lows in the last half of trade. You know, that's an important spot. Uh, quite a lot of the mid-cap IT names have actually recovered names like Birla Soft, etc. But when you're talking about the broader end of the markets, Hormaz has all of the stocks on his radar. This is our special segment, Mid-Cap Movers. Hormaz is standing by the wall to take us through the mid-caps that are moving around in the session. It's a stock-specific market indeed, so we will start off with the losers then within the broader market since the mid-cap index is underperforming in today's session. And, some, and most of those stocks are skewed towards the declines in KEI Industries at one point was down 10% after results, 6% lower now, slightly off the lows of the day. BSC, we'll hear from the management in just a bit, so keep an eye out on that. Cochin Shipyard and Balrampur Chini both down to the lowest point of the day. AMCs are doing well in today's session after HDFC AMCs results and the reaction on the other peer companies too, almost 5 to 13% worth of gains seen in today's session. Pharma is not having a very good day in uh, today's trading session. That's the sectoral loser in today's trade. 2 to 4% down. Almost all sectoral constituents of the Pharma index are trading with losses in today's session. Stocks that are gaining on the back of very strong volumes. And uh, Aditya Birla Sun Life, as you just mentioned, on very strong 14% higher now. Railtel on the back of the order win. BML won an order yesterday. Now the stock is up in today's session. And PNC Infratech on the back of yet another the order went up another 5% in today's session. And lastly, some other gainers within the broader market space. Amber Enterprises after the JV that it signed yesterday with a Korean company 7% higher. Ace and Sterling and Wilson too seeing healthy gains in today's session. Back to you guys. All right, Ormas, thank you so much for joining in. Now, with that, we'll do one thing. We'll slip into a short break. On the other side, we have an exclusive conversation lined up with Sundaraman Ra Ramamurthy, who's the MD and CEO of BSE. They have completed one year of launch of Bankex Derivatives, and there's a lot more to talk about with him as well. So stay tuned for that. Welcome back. You're still tuned into Midcap Radar. Let's get an important conversation going now. BSC today completes one year of launch of Bankex Derivatives. The stock so far this year has doubled, mainly after the SEBI's proposal to tighten norms of FNO trading. We have a lot to discuss uh, on the show today about this. Uh, we are joined by Sundaraman Ramamurthy, the MD and CEO of BSC. 
Mr. Ramamurthy, good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining in today. And uh, BSC is something that everyone's talking about, a lot of action happening there. But first up, let's talk about this one year anniversary of Bank X. How has the journey panned out in the last one year? Uh, and also, we saw some changes uh, which SEBI proposed recently. One of them is moving from that weekly to monthly expiry. How have volumes changed there? What are the trends that you're seeing? Uh, namaskar and uh, good afternoon. Thanks for having me in the CNBC studio for this uh, program. Uh, the, the exactly one year before this day, we relaunched the Bankex derivatives. The journey has been really very pleasant and smooth. In short span, we were able to see very good amount of participation from the market participants. Around 450 plus brokers are uh, trading this product now and around 110 FPIs are participating. A huge amount of contracts have gotten traded, around 643 crore contracts have gotten traded in this. It's, it's really the great support and trust of the entire market into this product that made this possible in such a short span of time. SEBI has recently come out with the requirement that for an exchange there can be only one weekly contract of a benchmark index. Sensex is the benchmark for BSC and we will have weekly contracts on that. So naturally <coughs> therefore BankX contracts will move to monthly. We feel that uh, option products as you know are very versatile products. Every product has its place, weekly had its place and the volumes panned out according to that. Monthly products have a very important role and very important place and lot of advantages. We are sure that the market participants will continue to show the same amount of trust and uh, support and monthly contracts of BankX will also pan out to be as sound as what the weekly contracts were. Mm. Uh, Mr. Ramurthy, uh, hi, good afternoon, sir, and congratulations, uh, Prashant here. Uh, <clears throat> could, you, could you tell us, did you consider uh, choosing the Bankex for the weekly contract, or was it always going to be Sensex? Uh, in our minds, we always had Sensex in our mind, because see, Sensex is an index which is the oldest benchmark index of the country. And today, if you look at any common man, even if he trades any other index, if you go and ask him in vernacular, Bazaar kaise reha? He will say, he will talk in number of points, Sensex has moved up or down. In a common man's mind, it is still Sensex. Probably that is one of the major reasons why, you know, that when we launched a Sensex derivatives contract, people were able to immediately relate to it and trade in it. So given that unique position of Sensex, we did not want to take it away from a weekly product and put, put it monthly. So our uh, choice I, I, for a weekly product got it. has always um, been. So I have two, I have two questions. One, uh, you know, so that is the sort of, uh, sort of, of course, emotional appeal. I mean, it's, I think it's the best known uh, sort of, uh, uh, in a way, almost a, a uh, synonym for markets, right? Sensex. Everyone knows it. Uh, so that's, that's, that makes sense. But in terms of pure business considerations, volumes traded on the Sensex and the uh, Bankex, was that, was that telling you a different story or that kind of aligned with uh, your thought process? And second, now that the NSC has uh, sort of chosen uh, the, uh, the, the Nifty, is there, a, is there a rethink at all that maybe you should offer the Bankex or no? Uh, so for us, uh, what uh, we have been always uh, looking at it is, uh, let's, let me first answer your first part of it. The volumes at Sensex are higher than that of the volumes in uh, Bank X. So that, but notwithstanding that, that has not been the consideration for choosing Sensex or Bank X. The, the point for choosing Sensex was exactly what I told you before. Uh, the second question was part of uh, whether we should rethink on uh, 
Sensex or Bankex? No. As I always tell, we have been benchmarking ourselves with ourselves. We have been trying to see how better we can perform tomorrow compared to yesterday. So given the inherent strength of Sensex, we have gone ahead with it and we feel that is the right thing that we have done. So there has been no rethinking on it. Mr. Ramurthy, you know, after you know the imposition of these norms, uh, what is the kind of change have you seen as far as trading behavior of market participants of concern? Has there been an increase in cash market volume activity given that there is expected to be a dip as far as the FNO market activity is concerned? Honestly, I feel that number of days that have gone post the changes are very minimal to assess the trend. There has been quite a few. Uh, there have been quite a few uh, changes that have come in. Uh, so it is too early, in my opinion, to say that uh, the SEBI requirement has brought in these 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 type of changes. The volumes in the last two, three four days have been lower in derivatives market. Uh, it could be for very many reasons. So to, to give a trend based on this, this is happening, I think it is a bit too early. We may have to wait and watch. Um, absolutely. Uh, the execution would take some time and that is when there will be clear trends available as well. Uh, Mr. Ramamurthy, you know, there's been a lot of anticipation that there could be a change in market share gains. There could be movement of market share gains from NSC to BSC now because of the changes that we've seen. We were speaking to Angel One today as well, and there are varied opinions that we are getting. Some are of the opinion that there could not be big market share gains for BSC, while some brokerages also think that there could be. Just generally, what is your sense? What are some of the uh, uh, calculations that BSC has gone through to understand the trends here? Will there be a movement in market share from NSC to BSC or just market share gains for you? Uh, no, I always have been repeatedly telling this in the media. We have been uh, looking at what more we should do. And in my opinion, combining different products and assessing a market share is not totally, uh, it could not be taken as a fully correct thing. The products are very different. When people used to ask me in the initial days, jocularly I used to tell, the market share of Sensex is 100% because whatever it is doing, it is what it is doing. They are unique products, you see. They are very complementary products. So we are not looking at our success in terms of what market share we are garnering. We are looking at our success in terms of how much we are deepening the market, how much we are broadening the market. If you recall, even before the SEBI role, we have always been talking about deepening of the market and broadening of the market through right. monthly contracts. <clears throat> to start with, when you start, you start with a weekly product, but subsequently you want to go to more participants, different types of participants, different types Mr. of time horizons, and Got more it. of a monthly product. Mr. Ramurthy, uh, you know, I hope you, you will uh, be a little more specific also. I completely get your point that, I mean, uh, I think you put it very nicely. Sensex market share is 100% because everything which happens, happens uh, there. But it is, you would acknowledge, right? I mean, markets, uh, BAC is a traded stock. From the time, 30th of July, when the SEBI proposals came through on FNO, the stock, the BSE stock is doubled from 2,500 to 5,000. So obviously... There is expectation. It's driven by expectation that uh, this will, this will, uh, you will gain share. So, without combining different segments, as you said, for in options, could you tell us what is BSE's market share in the options uh, segment? All uh, right, index options, and uh, any any expectations? Where would you like to be? What do you see? See, since you're asking for specifics, people talk about 20% market share, 25% market share in terms of notional. I would repeat that we track our success not based on market share. If you ask me, what were the number of market participants last year, what it is this year, what you are planning to have next year, I'll be able to give you a number. That's how we track our success. We started with 8, we went to 250, we went to 350, today we are talking about 450. The target is at least 600 brokers should be participating in BSE's derivatives segment. We started with no FPIs. Today we are at around 110 FPIs. We feel that at some point of time we should reach to a number of 500 FPIs. 
today we started with no product we had one product now we are talking about two products at some point of time we should have at least a couple of products so that is the way we are looking at it that is the honest answer for this question you're not giving us a uh, <laughs> number let me let me put it another way right so for example we had uh, the angel uh, one management uh, with us they said that overall futures and options volumes industry level volumes because of what sebi has done uh, could drop 20 to 22% is what they said the management said my my question to you is for the for the bsc just because of uh, you know the fno changes which has been implemented which will be implemented as per sebi direction the latest ones is it possible that you know bsc may gain relatively because if the total pool is 100 and it say it drops to 80 and you are at 10 but you gain say 10% and a, on a relative basis you're gaining but because the absolute size is shrinking uh, on an absolute on an absolute basis standalone basis uh, you know bsc may not uh, may not gain much is that the way, right way to look at it Honestly, I do not know whether it is right or wrong because that's not the way I am looking at it. What I am looking at it is if I am to doing today X number of contracts, I want to do 2X number of contracts tomorrow. I want to do X number of contracts more, Y number of contracts more day after tomorrow. Why do I say that? This is a product which is in nascent stages. Compared to a mature market where you have 800 market participants already working as brokers, I have only 40% or 50% of them with me. That is not sufficient for me. So in real basis and in absolute basis, I am working to increase the volumes of myself. Do I benchmark it in terms of acquiring market share? No. I am, I am benchmarking it in terms of deepening and broadening my market. I feel my volume should go up and will go up because it's a nascent project, product. It has not reached that levels of maturity and that levels of participation. More participation brings more maturity and therefore more volumes. That is the way, honestly, we are looking at it from BSC. Mm. Uh, no, got it. Is that number of overall market volumes, FNO market volumes falling 20 to 22 percent? Now, this is not about BSC, but overall market volumes, FNO volumes, uh, is that is that, re is that a in the ballpark correct estimate what we got from angel earlier i i will not be able to comment on the number but overall market volumes will they fall for the entire market put together clearly there is a probability because weekly products have been taking the attraction and attention of the market participants mm -hmm. and there were multiple weekly products that were available now going forward from november 20 there will not be multiple products, right? There will be only two weekly products available. Since monthly, weekly products were taking most of the volumes, in the short run, till the monthly products pick up, certainly there will be a decrease in volume overall for the market. What percentage it will be, that is anybody's guess. We have not fathomed any guess there because we feel that we need to work to increase the market volumes under all circumstances. We feel that monthly has a role to play, we should work to increase the volumes. Therefore, we have not, when, while, when you're asking, when you say whether there will be a fall in market volumes, it looks like there will be certainly a fall because the number of weeklies are reduced. More what than 10%? More, more, than, more than 10% or more than 20%? Products. More than 10% or more than 20%? I will not fathom a number. I will not fathom a number because no, that is going beyond my remit to talk about what will be the fall in some other exchange. That is not my right way of doing it. Okay, okay. all right. Uh, <laughs> we tried hard. <laughs> Mr. Ramurthy, thank you very much for joining us uh, and, and appreciate you uh, sort of giving us your perspective and broad take on uh, some of the most hot button issues. And I hope uh, post numbers when we speak, uh, you'll be able to, uh, post quarterly earnings when we speak, you'll be able to share uh, some of those numbers and we can pencil them, pencil them down. Thank you very much uh, for uh, joining us. Thanks. Okay, all right. Thank you, Prashant, for taking us through that conversation. Thank you so much, Mr. Ramamurthy, for joining in. That's all about BSE, but we have to slip into a short break. When we come back, we'll get you more on the markets and stock-specific action. Stay tuned.